Hello and welcome to this Substance Painter texturing tutorial. My name is Jonas Ronegard. I used to work as a 3D artist in the game industry. And currently I'm creating tools and resources for other artists at grotools.com. For this tutorial, the focus will be on texturing. So I have used one of our pre-unwrapped mid-poly kit bash products to quickly block out this vehicle model. Before we start, I want to mention that most of the alphas and brushes and other resources used in this tutorial is available for free. Also the vehicle model used for the tutorial is included in case you want to follow along or texture your own version. You can find a download link in the video description. I should also mention that it's been quite a while since I did a serious project in Substance Painter. So I might use some outdated workflows. Don't hesitate to point out new techniques that you know that might speed things up. So let's go ahead and start preparing the mesh for texturing. So what you can see here is all the primary parts that make up this model. The missing parts will be instances and share UV space with the original meshes. Since I want to keep things simple for the tutorial, I have decided to only use one texture set, which makes it more important to make the most out of the UV space that I got. For the UV layout, I have used Maya's automatic layout tool to stack the UV shells. I think it does a good enough job and for this project, I don't think it's worth spending too much time to go that extra step by doing it manually. Back in the Photoshop days, it was a lot more important to keep certain UV shells together and to keep it structured to make the texturing process easier. But with today's 3D texturing tools, it has no real purpose other than making the texture maps look more presentable. So for the main body parts, I have decided not to mirror anything, since I want to use decals and alphas to get some asymmetry between the two sides. The blue parts are single parts, without any duplicates. The green parts are parts that will be mirrored to the other side. As for the tire and hydraulic parts, they will have duplicates on this side as well as be mirrored to the other side. So to get started, let's start duplicating the parts out and then mirror them to the other side. I will also move out all the UV shells from the duplicated and mirrored parts from the UV space to avoid certain baking problems. For example, as you can see, this duplicate part is very close to the wall on the right, which would cause the ambient occlusion to become very dark on that side. And that would then transfer to all other duplicates sharing the same UV space. And as we still want the mesh itself to affect other parts ambient occlusion, we can't just simply delete the mesh for the bake. So instead we take out their UVs from the UV space and keep the meshes in their place. This way only the original parts ambient occlusion will be baked. While working on that, I noticed the body parts are a bit low poly compared to their size, especially around the edges. Luckily all our kit bash parts are subdividable, so I'll go ahead and subdivide them once. I should probably clean the mesh up a bit after subdividing it, as a lot of unnecessary geometry was also created. But since we don't really have any limits for this project, and this not being a modeling tutorial, I will just keep it as it is. Before exporting, I'll assign one material to the whole model, as Substance Painter creates one texture set per material. And we only want one texture set for this tutorial. So let's go ahead and export the mid poly mesh. Now an extra step we can take to prepare for baking is creating a high poly version of the same mesh. 
We won't be baking any high to low poly normals, etc. But using a high poly variant of the same mesh and use that one to bake ambient occlusion and curvature, then add those maps to the mid poly mesh can do quite the difference. So let's combine the parts and subdivide it a couple of times. And after exporting the high poly mesh, we can head over to the Substance Painter. We won't be using this mesh for the actual texturing part, so no need to think too much about these settings. So now we have our high poly mesh inside of Substance Painter. I'm surprised it runs this smoothly. Older versions of Substance Painter definitely wasn't this good at handling high poly meshes. I think this mesh is around 7 million trees. It sure has come a long way since I last used it. But those Titan RTX cards might be helping out a lot. But now with the 3000 series out, Getting that kind of power isn't a far reach anymore. So let's get right into the baking, which is the only thing we will actually use the high poly mesh for. My main focus is the ambient occlusion and curvature maps, so I will uncheck the other maps for now. I've heard that Substance Painter have added RTX specific functions to boost baking speeds. So I'm very interested to see how much of an improvement I'll actually get. So I'll push the settings to the max and see how it goes. And don't forget to change the curvature specific settings as well. So let's go ahead and bake. So although it's rendering really fast, let's speed up the video and check when it's finished. So the bake for the ambient occlusion and the curvature maps finished around the 8 minute mark which to me is an unbelievable difference to my past experiences, even compared to earlier versions of Substance Painter. And if I look back all the way to the X normals days, I remember I used to leave my 2048 resolution ambient occlusion bakes on overnight, and they were still rendering when I got back in the morning. Now the same bake would probably just take a couple of seconds. So nothing to complain about there. And the bakes are looking very crisp and clean as well. I'll bake out the other maps as well with the same settings. Now that the baking is done, we can export out the textures and add them to our mid poly mesh. For the export settings, I will use the mesh maps output template, 
as it exports out all the baked maps. For file type, I usually use TIFF. And for size, I should probably export them out as 8192, since that's what I baked them as. But since it's mainly for testing sake, and as I will end up using them at 4096 anyway, I'll keep them setting on the based on each texture set size which means they will be exported out as 4096. So now that we have gotten all the bakes from the high poly mesh, we can load up the mid poly mesh. In the project settings, I normally keep everything as it is. Sometimes the document resolution might be wrong. I usually run it at 496, but if your PC can't handle it, you can always work in a lower resolution and change it later or just export your textures at the high resolution when you're finished. Just double checking the wireframe, so I know I'm using the right mesh. For comparison's sake, I want to do a quick bake test at the same settings that I used for the high poly mesh. So I can demonstrate the difference I would get if I did the bakes directly with the mid poly mesh. So let's fast forward and check the results. I think the most obvious difference should be in the curvature map. So let's check that one out first. And as you can see, the gradients are looking very blocky and I'm getting a staircase kind of effect. I know it might not look like such a big problem, but these hard edges will cause a lot of problems when you use curvature based smart materials or generators, such as Edgeware, as it will detect these hard edges and add detail accordingly. Ideally, you want the smooth gradient on rounded edges such as this. So let's import our maps baked from the high poly mesh. And as you can see, it's quite the difference. Definitely worth the extra couple of minutes. Let's add the rest of the maps as well and take a closer look at the ambient occlusion. And from what I can see, it's looking very clean and it fits perfectly. To toggle between different viewport views, you can press B on your keyboard. Just going to do a quick comparison with the ambient occlusion as well. And the difference between the mid poly bake and the high poly bake is quite big here as well. I think we can call the baking done for now and start with the next step. So as we start with texturing, the first thing I want to do is decide on the base colors and split those areas into their own masked folders. As this model was made with kit bash parts, the masking will be very easy, as every part is its own separate mesh, so little to no manual mask painting will be needed, at least for the base. First, let's create the base metal layer that will be placed at the bottom of the layer stack. So any part that don't get added to a folder will use this material.
Then for every different color or material, I will create a folder and add a black field mask to it. Now I'll use the polygon fill tool that you can find on the left, but I already had it selected. But first, change the selection settings to mesh fill. And now any unconnected meshes that I click on will be filled as white in the mask. And any layer or additional folders that I add to this folder will only affect the masked out parts. You can press Alt plus left mouse button on the mask to view the black and white mask directly on the model. So let's create a couple of masked folders and see if we can find a good way to split the mesh up. The good thing about doing it this way is that once it's all set up, it's super easy to make changes and the layer stack will be a lot more structured and easy to navigate. You can also try out different roughness values to get a feel of what type of materials you want to use for each group. If you feel that a part doesn't fit with a group and you want to unmask it or if you want to add additional parts to a group, you can easily just go back to the polygon fill tool to add or delete parts from the mask. If you want to make color variations to parts that's already assigned to a mask folder, you can just create the same type of mask folder inside your existing folder which further helps to keep your project structured and easy to make changes to. So I think we have a good base here to try out some different color schemes. I'm mostly going to focus on the colors of the main body parts, as everything else will mostly use be different metal variations. So here is a couple of possible color schemes. I might actually end up making one or two variations, since there wouldn't be that much extra work to make another version. And if you're wondering about the presentation, I'm using iRay inside of Substance Painter, just to get a better idea of how it could look. And that's it for this part. In the next part, I will use alphas to add additional detail to the model. So I hope you stick around and see you in the next part.